open source software to, to the client's needs, specific needs, and, and that's quite fun. So that's uh, how we, we have uh, set up Intermedia, uh, our company. Um, I'm also president of Silex Labs. This I, I, I forgot to say it, but it's important here because maybe you want to ask me something uh, special to be a VIP for tonight because, uh, because uh, it will be a good night. So, um, yeah, um, we've had uh, several big clients and uh, like BBDO, Vodafone, um, uh, the television in France. And our first project, uh, our historical project is Silex. Because uh, we began with this, uh, we like it very much, and uh, it's a kind of a big project. It's a, a made for designer to publish websites. So uh, you here is uh, uh, the interface, and uh, you can publish uh, with drag and drop an intuitive interface. Uh, you can publish Flash or HTML web websites. It's more Flash based, in fact. HTML is just a plugin. And um, it's in the cloud, so you, you're in your browser and you're editing the site. You don't need to, to program at all. And that's good for designers, they're usually very happy with it. Um, so that's it uh, uh, for designers to lowers, lowers the entry barriers to web design. That's the point of Silex. Since we love this project, um, we, we have uh, set up a, uh, a non-profit organization uh, quite ma many years ago and Silex Labs uh, is born from Silex but uh, is not only Silex nowadays. Um, it's, it's very important for us, uh, Silex Labs, uh, it's not about development, it's just like Nicolas said uh, before, it's about communication, uh, community management, um, it's about uh, Isabel who is there and uh, help us a lot, uh, it's about uh, people. And also uh, tools to, to collaborate, like our exchange platform or uh, community uh, uh, platform. So Silex Labs also holds the copyright of the projects which, uh, which we, we help. Um, in this project there is also, for example, AMFPHP, which uh, Ariel is the lead developer here, uh, and several other projects. So uh, let's talk a little bit about Silex before, uh, so that I can explain why we, we had to implement Cocktail, the hacks library. So Silex started eight years ago. It, was it looked, it looked <laughs> like that. It was kind of rough, but, um, and full flash, only flash. And um, yeah, OK, no comments. So <laughs> after that, we, we did the V1. This was the V0. Uh, there was V0, 1, 2, 3, se until 7, and now we are uh, to the V1 point, uh, I don't know, uh, 6 or 7, also 7. So we thought it's time to, to go uh, further with Silex V2 and make it cross-platform. By that I mean not only uh, the, the uh, web-based web uh, platform, not only the browsers, uh, but also the native uh, applications. So, next please. Uh, so I mean the desktop, the mobiles, the tablets. Uh, we we'd like to to go really far with uh, with Silex so that designers uh, can uh, can do multi-screen applications without programming, and uh, be very happy with that. I'm sure they will love it. And for uh, for Silex V2, we needed hacks, of course. So we started to work on si on. Uh, Silex with hacks, and then we noticed that th there are several things that we would need uh, to to implement uh, our uh, vision, uh, and which are not already in hacks. So let's let's, for example, the layout, uh, the manipulation, and uh, you know we need common design elements to align things, make lists, and uh, uh, nice um, interfaces. And the layout, there is no cross-platform layout. Uh, uh, for now in Hex. Also the UIs, there are several uh, UIs libraries but uh, none is really cross-platform and, uh, and commonly used by, uh, by Hex uh, community. Um, so, and the last thing we need is uh, OS integration in order to, to have a, a cross-platform notification system, uh, geolocalization, etc. 
to address these uh, issues, we, we created a new project, which is called Cocktail. It's a hacks library. And uh, we can define it, a way to de define it uh, easily, uh, simply, I mean, is uh, it's, it's a HTML, CSS, uh, and uh, rendering engine written in hacks, of course. This, this you know. Um, for example, what we did for now with it, we dis did some demos and some uh, small applications. For, for example, this one, uh, which uh, here you can see how uh, the layout works. You, you hear us? No? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the layout uh, works. It's cross-platform native application on the, in the mobile or web applications in the browser. And we went um, uh, further with TVs. So. Uh, yeah, so that's what we've done so far with uh, Cocktail. Uh, Cocktail uses the GS API. It's an implementation of the GS uh, API of Hex, um, because, in fact, um, all this what we do with uh, with uh, Cocktail is uh, easier to do with styles and you know the layouts in GS and uh, uh, after after all HTML in fact is made for layouts, right? So. That's what we use in, in cocktail. Um, yeah, it's widely used also, and uh, it's standard. I mean, yeah, almost uh, completely standard. Um, the workflow uh, with cocktail is uh, really nice for people who know HTML, CSS, and for the others, uh, it's it's always nicer to work uh, with the uh, HTML, uh, CSS workflow than uh, Flash. Uh, uh, with the Flash API, sometimes it's, it's hard to make, uh, you know, uh, complex uh, UIs. So if you don't want to, to use Flex, uh, the, the HTML CSS is, uh, is a good choice. And then you add interactivity with HackGS. This is a common uh, uh, practice. And you compile, the, um, you compile your application with HackGS, of course, because it's an implementation of, uh, of the GS API. So. But you can also compile with Flash, uh, Hacks Flash, and uh, then with Enemy, in order to target all the, the platform that uh, you, s you saw before. <coughs> I think you need a little bit of uh, code, right? You want to see? Or, uh, or you want to stop there because, no? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yannick will show you something, I think. It's cool. <coughs> okay, thanks, Alex. Um, I'm going to... Uh, so uh, run you through the basics of using a cocktail, but uh, as Alex said, the main thing you need to, uh, to know is that if you've uh, already built an Axe JS application, you already know how to use cocktail. So for instance, say I want to build an application which displays a little text, which will be my, uh, which will be the title of my application. So I use the standard lib.document.create element method. So you know them if you know uh, JavaScript or Axe.js. I'm going to create an H1, H1 element, which in uh, HTML means uh, this is the main uh, title of my application. Then I can uh, add some text to it by creating uh, what's called text node in, uh, in JavaScript. So uh, with the same kind of method, I can do lib.document.create text node. I can put in my little text. And then what I need to do is attach it to the body, which uh, in HTML, it's like uh, the stage in Flash. It's the root of the display list. It's the document that body. Append child, which is my, very much like a child. I attach my title. OK, so hopefully it will compile. And now I'm going to compile to uh, both JavaScript and Axe. So, and uh, Flash. <laughs> but Axe too. OK, so I built uh, for JavaScript. I can see in uh, this one. OK, I can see in JavaScript. OK, so pretty much what you expect. You've got a big text, which is the title of my, uh, my document. And now when I build for Flash, OK, and I reload. I have a pretty much the same thing between JS and Flash, minus a bit margin on top. Will be fixed. Okay. So what it means is that uh, basically we took all those classes like uh, document, window, uh, 
HTML element uh, image, and we build them in a pure axe, which makes them cross-platform when using uh, bah, something like a Flash, something like NNE. Okay, so when on a Okay, so that's how you build an HTML uh, DOM using uh, JavaScript and make it cross-platform with Cocktail. So another um, nice thing of using the JS API is that you create uh, a clean semantic. For instance, say I create a paragraph of text that I will add. So I use the same method as before, but I use a P element, which in HTML is a paragraph of text. I'm going to copy-paste some text in it. Okay, and then I attach it. Oops. I attach to my body, and it will display be displayed uh, after my title. Okay. Open child. Okay, we've got some pretty serious coder in the room. <laughs> okay, so I build for both targets this time. Compiler is a bit slow for the flash target. I, I don't know why. And uh, in JavaScript, uh, you can see it added a little text. And in Flash, the same thing once again. But so when I open Firebug in JavaScript, I can see when I inspect uh, the DOM. You just have a, a body, an H1, and, and a P element. So a cocktail doesn't add any unnecessary marker. You, you got no uh, wrapper, div, uh, those kind of stuff. And in fact, when you build for uh, JavaScript, it doesn't even embed cocktail. So it doesn't add any, uh, add any footprint to your JavaScript uh, application. You only got your classes and the standard uh, library of, uh, of Axe. Okay. So you can use a uh, cocktail to build a clean semantic application when they are compiled for the browser. Okay, nice. Um, thank you. It's a, it's a demo that shows that cocktail is a real good complement to NME because we use it for a compilation. Uh, NME, by the way, is a really great project. It's incredible what the, the quantity of work which it, it represents. Um, uh, you, you saw that uh, we use the JS API, and uh, of course it's clean in JS, and so we use NME to compile. But <coughs> that's not all. Okay. <laughs> Another thing we built uh, into Cocktail is CSS. So CSS is used uh, to style uh, the display, the visual display of your elements. So for instance, you can style uh, uh, the appearance of text. Say I want uh, my title, instead of being displayed uh, in black, I want it to be orange. I can, so I get my title object. I have a style object. It's an, on all HTML elements. And I can say, OK, I want to put this color. I'm going to use a keyword, a color keyword. It's orange. So it will, uh, my text will display as orange instead of black. I'm going to copy paste a couple of styles. OK, so in those three lines, what I do is I set uh, the title uh, to orange. Uh, I use the font size Arial instead of times, which is default. And I uh, put a space of 10, px between, uh, 10 pixels uh, between each word. So again, I build. And as before, I can see that in Flash and JavaScript, I got pretty much the same rendering. OK, so CSS text uh, is implemented in Cocktail. In a cross-platform way, with NME, it uh, will also work as a native application of some kind. And uh, another thing, uh, last thing, it's a uh, one side effect of using GS API is that it makes uh, your, uh, your document uh, compatible with an uh, older version of HTML, like HTML4. So for instance, see, if I create an image element, then copy paste to so I copy an image element, I set its source. So what I do here is I create a picture and I attach it to my paragraph. And time again, you've got 
the same kind of rendering in both targets. But in GIS, I can see that the generated code uses an EMG tag, which is a legacy tag, which will work in an old version of IE, like IE7, IE8. So your application will work, once built with this, not only work in Flash, uh, in HTML5, but also in older version of HTML, which can be uh, pretty nice as uh, IE7, 8 uh, is still uh, not dying. OK. Um, this is not maybe it doesn't seem useful to some of you but uh, we had a case which uh, required uh, html4 compatibility in fact so that's why uh, yannick uh, is talking about that uh, for example uh, for france television uh, french uh, broadcasters we had to to make some uh, applications for the tv which uh, with hbb tv and uh, it's only html4 in fact so we can we could use hacks and uh, with cocktail to to make these applications in fact Hacks GIS because it's, it's only that. But this application, then we can compile it to na other native applications uh, or uh, Flash or whatever. Um, I, I'd like to just uh, sum it up a little bit. Uh, so we use the GS API, we compile with NME, and um, something very important that uh, Yannick showed is the text engine. Uh, it's uh, complementary to the text engine of NME. NME, it's uh, it's really uh, we really implemented a full uh, text engine uh, uh, with the Flash uh, compilation to Flash. Uh, all the the CSS uh, uh, concerning the text are, are implemented, and it's a, a, a big work. So, okay, wh one could even imagine uh, some code uh, with the, the Flash Flash API uh, to be compiled uh, with NME or with Hacks Flash besides some code with the GS API. So I'll let you imagine what it would like, uh, what it would uh, be, uh, yeah, what it would be like. Uh, so <laughs> it's, it's um, you, you know, the, the Flash API uh, usually doesn't go well with uh, the GS API unless you use uh, conditional compilation. But uh, this will make some very interesting mix, I think. I, I, uh, I, I'd like to see that. Uh, Soon you know, we, we we will release a demo. I hope with with that. Um, okay, uh, but it's not about the only about the text engine, the semantic, and uh, uh, what we use. So Yannick will show you the the real um, core of uh, cocktail. <coughs> okay, so one of the main reasons to use the CSS is for the layout capabilities. You can do a pretty complex layout with CSS, like a fluid uh, website, this kind of stuff. So we built a large part of it uh, into a cocktail. <coughs> so for instance, I'm going to create a container which will contain all of my uh, application content. So uh, it's going to be a div. OK. Div, I'm going to paste a bit. So uh, to this container, I append my previously created title and paragraph. And now using the style object, I can say, OK, I want the width of my uh, Okay, I want the width of my uh, on my website, my application, to be 50%, which means it will take 50% of the available uh, browser width. I can also set the margins to be, so I'm going to set margin left and margin right. To be set as auto, which means that uh, my site, my, the content of my site will be centered inside of the browser. And of course, I have to attach it to the body so that it gets displayed. Child, won't forget this time. OK. OK, so in JavaScript, it works like that. And in Flash, it works like that. So it looks a bit more like an application. And when I resize my browser, I can see that it takes that it resize and same thing for flash, it resize and takes uh, the available width. Okay, so you can uh, use CSS layout in a cross platform way. And uh, one last thing, it's uh, you can also use CSS background, so to add background to uh, every element that you want, so say I want my site instead to be transparent, my site container to have a background color. So 
like in CSS, I can define a color, which I can define using a keyword, using an X value or an RGBA value. So with RGBA, you define a red, green, blue, and alpha channel separately. So this value, for instance, will be a white with a 50% uh, transparency. And then I'm going to add a background image to my body, so it will be an image which is styled all over the background, the browser. Okay, style background. So what? I'm going to copy paste this one. I don't remember the URL. Oh. I did something wrong. Ah. Okay. There you go. And as before, and as always, when I compile and when I build, I've got the same, pretty much same rendering for both targets. <coughs> so you can use CSS backgrounds too in a cross-platform way. It will work in an enemy application since it works in Flash. Okay, I'm sure you understand how useful it can be when you, you make uh, enterprise applications and, uh, and even for games, like, uh, like I said, you can uh, in the same application have the, the game in NME and all the parameter um, uh, and settings in, uh, with a, a nice uh, GS uh, syntax. Um, okay, we implemented, uh, as you understood, we implemented the CSS styles uh, cross-platform in Pure Hacks. Uh, we, it's, it's a big job uh, mostly done by Yannick, so uh, we are very <laughs> thankful to him to, because CSS is quite a, f you know, it's a, it's a pain to, to go through the, the specifications and, uh, and code all the rendering tree and uh, it's kind, uh, it's a big work. And he's, uh, he's already done with 80% of the CSS styles, which is a lot, yeah. Uh, CSS3 and uh, also included it. I mean, uh, some of the CSS2 are uh, missing, but very few. And CSS3, almost all uh, is already included in, in Cocktail. So, um, yeah, I think uh, Yannick has made a kind of browser uh, in hacks, a cross platform browser. Or, uh, yeah. So young and so talented, it's uh, <laughs> yeah. should not exist. But anyway, we are already uh, we think too much, so we are already thinking to cocktail v2. Uh, what what we didn't cover in cocktail v1 is uh, is um, a style manager. It's, it's a little bit of a detail, but uh, for now we have the sty inline styles and no uh, external style sheet are loaded. Uh, so you have to, to make your HTML uh, with the styles uh, in line. Uh, we don't have a, a CSS selectors. For now, we, it's not uh, in Cocktail V1. It will be in Cocktail V2. And uh, the UIs, we, we didn't have uh, all the HTML UIs like uh, drop-down lists and uh, uh, checkbox. Uh, we only have a few of them. So we will not try to make it for, uh, for uh, Cocktail V1. We'll leave that for Cocktail V2. The HTML form also, tag. It's, uh, um, the OS integration, uh, we'd like to implement the, all the HTML5 um, API for... Uh, Sorry, je, yeah. I forgot to switch the, the slides. Uh, OS integration for uh, HTML5 API is, is quite, quite good for all the, you know, uh, the stuff about um, geolocalization and uh, what I said before, the notification systems. There are already a lot of things, and we'd like to, to be compatible with these uh, APIs um, for, uh, for the desktop, for uh, all the, the targets. Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, OK, we've uh, something to tell you today. <laughs> but before, do you see something else for, for Cocktail? Uh, V2, something missing you would like to see and uh, you have remarks. There is a microphone here. Thank you.
quests. Um, I've got a question. Uh, you say you've done most of the CSS3 stuff. Does, uh, is, that, is that just some tech stuff, or is that all of the actual uh, like transition stuff? There's a lot of CSS3. So, have you done the 3D transfer? No, I think oh, uh, we've done the CSS uh, 2D transforms because uh, when we first started Cocktail, we didn't meant for it to be an HTML CSS uh, stuff, but uh, a rendering uh, engine. So we started with more uh, flash specific stuff like uh, rotation, uh, scaling matrix. And uh, so that's in, but animation is not here, here yet. Uh, well, uh, you can, yeah, I was like, uh, that's so like, uh, stuff like that. No worries. Okay, uh, but we, we were not done. It was a bit of a rhetoric fun. It's more like it's okay, <laughs> but uh, ask away. Okay, so what you've been doing is uh, to define the uh, structure in code. But what about importing existing pages uh, uh, to feeding the engine with existing ah. pages yeah. and CSS script? Okay, so that's an excellent question, which will help us to move on with the presentation because uh, <laughs> we were we were expecting this, and uh, I. <laughs> I was pretty sure we wouldn't get a question as perfect as this, so thank you very much. <laughs> if you have any other question concerning the first topic? No, 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 no. no. Uh, questions we've got question are after, after at the end. Sorry. It was okay, perfect. so, yeah, this question, we, we were expecting this. So, the question of the markup language, in fact. So, is it possible to import existing HTML? Uh, do we have to write the, the HTML DOM by hand, like you saw, uh, creating a new image? It's, it's quite heavy if you have a. You know, yeah. So, Yannick will show you, you'll understand right away. Okay. So, uh, what we built is a little bit, uh, little application, but it's uh, still uh, a lot of code. So, what I can do with Cocktail, so cross platform 2, is I can go and uh, using Firebug, I'm going to grab the generated uh, HTML. So, I get the div. Then to Copy HTML code, and then okay, I can I can comment everything I've done before because in just one line of code, you can do the same thing. Document that body in HTML. Okay, and I have to close the image tag because Firefox doesn't for some reason. Uh, Okay, so I build, and you see that in one line, defined as HTML with CSS, I've got pretty much the same thing. Once again, it's the same thing, except for the background image, which disappeared because it was on the body, and I only defined what's inside the body. So I'm, now I'm going to add a little interactivity to put, it, uh, to put it back. So what can I do is define an ID. I'm going to define an ID for my image in my HTML. Okay. Okay. So the idea of my image will be thick, and I can retrieve a reference to it using a standard, once again, DOM method. I get element by ID, thick, and I'm going to do when I click on my picture. Okay, the following code is executed. Basically, I'm going to copy paste the code which sets the background image, background image on my, uh, on the body. Okay, so that's it. So uh, I launch the, the stuff when I click on my image, a background image is displayed. Ah. I have to cast my picture. Okay. That was this. I have my cheat sheet. Uh, okay. So this time, it's going to I call it fake, so it won't compile. Drum roll. Yes, uh, amazing. Now, first in trash, I click my picture. And there it is, cool. <laughs> and now that my application is ready, I just have to change 
a little input statement. I can tell you afterwards if you're interested. And I have a little build command. So now you can pray 50 50, will it work? It will, should take some time. So. You know what he's doing? He's compiling with the enemy, right? Yeah. He didn't say it, so. It's yeah, a bit, yeah. uh, but it's a very it's small a application. Okay, okay. Microsoft is a studio. <laughs> We've got 10 minutes left, so it's okay. <laughs> so you can see this is the Windows command line. I can read it for you if you want. It was faster on my own computer. We should get a new laptop. Okay. Ah, it works. Here it is. My beautiful window application, and when I click, wow. I have the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So. Wait, 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 wait. Oops. Whoa. Going a bit far ahead. So. Yeah. And uh, how we did uh, this? Uh, so now we so. Uh, we coded an HTML and CSS parser, and uh, we used a, a project from Nicolas called HTML, and we built upon it uh, to uh, to, uh, okay, to support. Uh, so, if you accept parsing. a patch, maybe we can contribute. Um, yeah, great. So, it looks like uh, you like it. I'm uh, very happy with your reaction. It's good. Um, so, cocktail is for developers, for you, my friends. Uh, it's a HTML, CSS, a cross platform for native apps, web apps, great. Okay, you understood that, huh? Uh, okay. And uh, so we'll bring uh, Cocktail uh, to Silex. We'll ma make um, a new implementation of the core of Silex uh, with uh, Cocktail. So it will be the same but for designer. So that lowers uh, the entry barriers to multi screen applications for designers, which is quite a challenge. So that's it. And Oh yeah, we'll finish by uh, some remarks about uh, our plans, uh, the roadmap, in fact. Uh, cocktail uh, in beta version will be soon released, in less than two months. Uh, the Cocktail Sunrise, which is the name of the um, V1 of uh, Cocktail, uh, is planned for three to six months if we keep going like we are going uh, nowadays, uh, today. Um, and then we'll, we'll try to, to make the V2 of Silex, which is our uh, goal for uh, uh, sometimes now um, yeah you can follow us on github uh, you can ask questions on uh, uh, the forums which are hosted by silex labs and uh, and yeah you have questions maybe ah i'm sure you do <laughs> <laughs> okay. do you have a css uh, a part of css support to use to support all the positioning stuff like plot uh, position of solid and all the yes. like uh, annoying so, uh, things. Okay. And it, I don't there. know if I'm so confident to try it live. You want to see? No, it no, no. Yeah, I trust you. No, 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 no. <laughs> Tell me. It's I don't trust uh, the code. I don't know yeah, which yeah. repository. Oh, if, if you, if uh, you position, position definitely works. Yeah. Float is. Uh, Float left, I, I got right. it uh, working. Uh, Float left, right. I got it working. Clearance too. Yeah. But uh, I am uh, re-implementing. We are refactoring a bit, yeah, so yeah. it's going to work in uh, about uh, for the for the beta. It's going to work definitely. What about table? Tables not. No, no. We, we didn't. Uh, we need to implement uh, display styles uh, for tables yeah. because the uh, HTML uh, tables is not uh, much for them to build the uh, DOM. Uh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, my question is, uh, if in um, I'll send D. Yeah. No. I remember I saw this code. He put a whole HTML rendering doc on the rendered in Python. So what I will do is I will email him. Sure. That would be a tool. That's for sure. It's going to be uh, quite useful. Thank okay. you. Thank it's you. It's it's uh, another proof it's that uh, cool. it's Thanks. good that we meet sometime because uh, there are so many projects. It's uh, 
Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, here's a question again. So, uh, how is uh, Cocktail going to support uh, the dynamic modifications of the structure of the website? Like, if I have to replace an element with another one, so in real time, will it update? Does it resize uh, to affect the new layout of the screen, stuff like that? Uh, yeah, yeah, it does already. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, it's that's uh, the point. It's uh, and, uh, it, it, it behaves it's like it's like JS. Yeah, it's meant to behave like the browser. So if it doesn't, it's a bug. Okay. The uh, major question on my list is: What was the reference implementation for the HTML engine? What? Well, uh, I don't know. The, the what? Try understand the question. Mm -hmm. uh, what reference implementation did you use for the uh, HTML engine? Uh, okay. The one in you mean in the browser? What's yeah. The browser yeah. reference. Uh, we test uh, mostly in uh, Chrome and Firefox. Okay. But uh, it's come. It comes from the specification from uh, W3PC. Uh, so it's a mix of uh, HTML4, CSS 2.1, and what is uh, finished of HTML5, CSS3, because it's still work in progress. Okay, so you're basically moving on along the specification. Yes. Okay, great. You should be we the only one. We built HTML4, CSS 2.1, and now <laughs> we're moving towards HTML5 and CSS3. Cool. Thank you. Hello. Uh, just a simple question. On the demo uh, action script, when you resize uh, the window, is it coded in the AxeJS or in the? It's Can you show the code of this? Uh it's coded in uh, in Flash. Uh, Sorry, I in, in Axe, it's coded in Axe and it's compiled. Uh, uh, maybe I didn't understand the question. I, I'm not sure. You 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 ask uh, if um, if, the, the, can if, you the, if the resize. Sorry, if the the resize event uh, is. Uh, is this in the HTML page or mm. it's, uh, it's, li it's listened on the Flash stage object? Yeah, because w once you've compiled your application, it's uh, it's only Flash code, you know. It's a, a Swift, it's a Swift file, so the events are fired by the, the Flash, and, uh, and yeah. Is it what you you ask, right? Okay. Hi. Okay. Um, I have two questions actually. The first question is, uh, do you support the uh, event API and uh, if so, also event delegation? I didn't, uh, yeah, the question is. Okay. Uh, the first question, uh, do you support the event API and if so, uh, event delegation? Event API of uh, HTML? Uh, for, for now, we have a callback, so you can do uh, image dot on click on uh, move over, on rollover. And for V2, we're going to implement uh, add event listener, remove event listener, uh, going to build a small uh, event listener system uh, inside of Cocktail. Thank you. And uh, as another question. Uh, there's a small company in America, you might know it, it's called uh, Yahoo. And they recently released a framework, web framework called Cocktail. Are you going to sue them? I oh, remember. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. we got uh, the name cocktail like uh, one month before this, and when we saw the news, we oh God, it can't be happening. <laughs> They've got the same thing, but it's called Mojito, I think, or something like that. Mojito is the uh, version, I think. The so we can't. Name, uh, so yeah. sadly, we can't do a cocktail version called the Mojito. So we took Sunrise, which is. Or maybe we will. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, so uh, you know, Yahoo is uh, going to to fall down. <laughs> so we're going to rise, so uh, it's we're going to meet yeah. Uh, yeah. meet halfway. Yeah, we meet halfway. That's the point. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to take the name Morito from them. Okay. Well. Okay. Uh, Actually, good question. We, uh, yeah, we I looked uh, into it about uh, uh, two two weeks ago, and uh, it will be good once uh, cocktail is enough advanced. I think. Uh, we're going to maybe start may us something a star, uh, side project. It will be a good uh, good project. It's about uh, ten thousand lines of code, so it's a lot, but not so much. So just to support stuff. So it'll be pretty yeah, awesome. you you you'd like it. You you think it would be really useful, right? I think it will be. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that yeah. Jeffrey is really like definitely useful of for handling uh, all the industry. A lot of people are using it. So if they have to make the choice, 
to go cross platform and they have to not use jQuery, that's the hard choice. Yeah. Okay. So if you have jQuery, and actually you don't have to deal with browser chance because you are using your implementation. So right. it's just following the jQuery API and yeah. just doing uh, dining to your own API. Mm -hmm. So that should be like. I, I mean think we, we would have to re, re implement the yeah. whole library. But yeah, yeah, you yeah, have yeah, to yeah. implement yeah. But yeah. I mean, you don't have to implement all of it, most of the easy part. The Quite selectors enough. will be nice, but first we need to implement the selectors and CSS selectors in a yeah, abstract yeah, way. Exactly. It's not for today, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we <think> soon. <laughs> yeah, mm, soon. Ah, Yannick. Six months. Six months. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.